In this question, we are supposed to choose the correct options from these four. So let's look at the first option. In the first option, a coin is to be tossed seven times. In the number of outcomes in which at most three heads appear. So we need a maximum of three heads. So that gives us four cases, which is zero heads, one head, two heads, and three heads. So zero cases of the seven, we choose no toss at all. So that will become 7C0, which is equal to 1. And for one head, we choose one toss of the 7, which is 7. And for two heads, we choose two tosses of the 7, which is 21. And finally, three heads is three choices from 7, which is 35. So all of these put together gives us 64 outcomes. So, yeah, this is 64 and this is correct. Now, for the second part, if a fair die is rolled thrice, the number of outcomes in which the sum of the three results is odd. So, the sum of the results should be odd, and that we are looking for the number of outcomes. So the sum of the three results should be odd, which means let's call these results R1 plus R2 plus R3. And this is odd. And this can only happen if all three of them are odd. Or two are even. and one is odd. These are the only two cases, which is all are odd or two are even and one is odd. So why are these only two cases? Suppose we consider the other cases where all are even. If all are even, you're going to get the sum is even. And if there is only one even and two odd, the sum of two odds will be even. So even plus even will give you even. So these are the only cases we have. And now let's look at them. All are odd. So in the first result, we have three options. In the second result, we have three options. And in the third result, we have three options. Because you have 1, 3, 5, 1, 3, 5, 1, 3, 5 in all of these. Whereas in the next case, again you will have first result will have three options, second result will have three options and third result will have three options. So these options are 3, 3, 3 because there are also three even numbers. So let us assume that R1 is odd, then R1 has the option of being 1, 3, 5. But R2 and R3 will then have the options of being 2 or 4 or 6. And now there is a further concern of which one is the odd result. So that can be chosen in 3C1 ways, which is basically R1 is odd or R2 is odd or R3 is odd. So now if we count the total number, we will have 3 into 3 into 3 is equal to 27 for all are odd. Whereas in the other case, you'll have 3 into 3 into 3 into 3C1, which is 81. The sum is then 27 plus 81, which is 108. But here they're saying it is 36, which is not true. So this is not true. Going further, the number of ways of selecting at least one Indian and one, at least one American for a debate from a group comprising of three Indians and four Americans is 105. So we have at least one Indian and at least one American. Now the problem doesn't say how many people need to be selected. So presumably you can choose any number. So if you can choose any number, 
there are three Indians and four Americans. So there are seven in all. So if you can choose any number, what you are getting is 7C1 plus 7C2 plus 7C3, so on, till 7C7. This is if there are no restrictions. And this is equal to 2 power 7 minus 1. That is 127. Of these, we should remove the cases where there are no Indians or no Americans. So, the cases where there are no Americans, let's take for example, then you can pick one Indian or two Indians or three Indians. So, that will be 3C1 plus 3C2 plus 3C3, which again is equal to 2 power 3 minus 1. And similarly, if we choose one American or two Americans or three Americans or four Americans without any Indians, you will get 4C1 plus 4C2 plus 4C3 plus 4C4, which is equal to 2 power 4 minus 1. This is 7 and this is 15. So, of the total possibilities, we are subtracting 7 plus 15, which gives us 127 minus 22, which is equal to 105. So, this is the number of ways to pick a debate team in which there is at least one Indian or one American and 105 is correct. So, C is also correct. Now, let us look at the last option, which is two adults and three children can sit around a circular table in 12 ways such that the adults are always sitting together. Okay. So, then we have a circular permutation here. There are two adults. Now, these two adults are treated as one entity and then they have C1, C2 and C3 who can sit around them, the three children. So, technically these are four entities totally and in a circular permutation for n entities you will get n minus 1 factorial that is three factorial ways in this case, but the a1 and a2, the adult 1 and adult 2 can be interchanged in each of these permutations. So, you get additionally 2 that gives us 6 into 2, 12 ways. So, this is 12 ways which means d option is also 